Casey Anthony became the most hated woman in America. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're examining 20 notorious crimes of the century so far. What's up and hi to all my fans. Who his fans are, who knows? But by this posting just yesterday, it's clear Luca Magnotta's narcissism was intact. For this list, we're looking at the most shocking and era-defining crimes that have occurred between the year 2000 and 2022. Do you remember hearing about these stories in the news? Let us know in the comments below. The Enron scandal. I think there was just an immediate sense of outrage at lay and skilling and fast style when people realized how much they had profited and how completely artificial the appearance of this company had been. Formed back in 1985, Enron was an American energy company headquartered in Houston, Texas. Enron was claiming $100 billion in revenue by the year 2000, but the company collapsed just one year later, with Enron declaring bankruptcy in October 2001. It was revealed that Enron executives had been partaking in accounting fraud and hiding billions of dollars in company debt. Congress wants to know what caused the Enron meltdown, wants to know why employee retirement funds were wiped out while at the same time, top executives were personally making millions. Enron CEO Jeffrey Skilling was later sentenced to 24 years in prison. He served 12 and was released in February 2019. The Enron scandal helped lead to the creation of the Sarbanes-Oxley Act, a federal law centered around corporate bookkeeping. It was at that point that I knew the architect of the disaster knows that it's crumbling and the rat is leaving the sinking ship. Brock Turner. Brock Turner was guilty of three counts of sexual assault. He faced a maximum sentence of 14 years in prison for his crimes. The People versus Turner turned out to be one of the most controversial court cases of the century, not only for the nature of the crime, but for the hotly contested outcome. Brock Turner was a Stanford University student who assaulted an unconscious woman on January 18, 2015. Despite being convicted of felony sexual assault, Turner was sentenced to just six months in prison, resulting in public outrage. What we didn't know at the moment was that the defeat of the light sentence was actually the most positive thing, because in that, it ignited a movement. To make matters worse, he only served three of the six months. The judge who presided over the case was eventually recalled, which essentially means that he was fired by county voters. And in response to the lenient sentencing, California passed a bill requiring a mandatory three-year prison term for the assault of an unconscious or intoxicated person. The statement that was essentially made by the passage of that mandatory minimum was, um, Judge Persky has screwed up so badly and so abused his discretion that we need to pass a law to make sure that no other judge can ever do this again. The 2005 London bombings. It, 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 really, it really is a scene of some confusion here. On July 7, 2005, the United Kingdom experienced its worst terrorist attack in 17 years. The incident is known as the 7-7 bombings, owing to its taking place on the seventh day of the seventh month. In the midst of the morning rush, four Islamic terrorists detonated explosive backpacks across the city, targeting both the London Underground and the public Tavistock Square. I'd expected to see a monster, and I didn't see a monster. I saw a young man. 52 citizens died in the bombings, and a further 784 were injured making this the deadliest UK terrorist attack since the bombing of Pan Am Flight 103 on December 21st, 1988. London was expected to be a target, but no amount of foreknowledge could prepare anyone for this. The Christchurch Mosque shootings. These are people who I would describe as having extremist views that have absolutely no place in New Zealand. New Zealand's Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern referred to March 15, 2019 as one of her country's darkest days. That was when a gunman traveled to the Al Noor Mosque and the Linwood Islamic Center and committed two mass shootings, resulting in 51 deaths and 40 injuries. The shooting at Al Noor was live streamed on Facebook and further disseminated through various video sharing sites, resulting in further outrage. Three minutes later, he emailed his manifesto to 70 addresses, including the office of New Zealand Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern. The shooter was a far-right extremist and terrorist who harbored a hatred of Islam, and he was eventually sentenced to life in prison without parole. This sentence was unprecedented in New Zealand's history. 
In response to the shooting, the country passed a bill banning semi-automatic guns, with a buyback scheme for such firearms that had been legally obtained. My feeling is that he chose New Zealand because it was a soft target in terms of security. The event has raised some real issues around gun control and gun licensing in this country. The disappearance of Madeleine McCann. In the end, it was a vacation that should never have happened. Oh, hang on, hang on. I think we're on video. Get everyone in. Missing person cases tend to captivate people, owing both to the nature of the stories and our interest in mysteries. And if there's one disappearance of the century that captured the world's attention, it was that of three-year-old Madeleine McCann. The English girl was vacationing with her family in Portugal when she went missing. She and her siblings were put to bed at 8.30 p.m., while her parents went to dine at a nearby restaurant. When McCann's mother checked on her at 10 p.m., she found her daughter missing. And then just went flying out down to the tapas restaurant. Show someone's taken Madeline. The case turned into a media circus, with British tabloid Daily Express in particular blaming and vilifying Madeline's parents. Madeline's disappearance remains unsolved, although German authorities have put forth a man named Christian Bruckner as a prime suspect. He's currently in jail. Officers say he was regularly living in the Algarve between 1995 and 2007. He has always denied any involvement. The Orlando nightclub shooting. Those first few officers that get there need to go to that scene, go to the building and get in and engage that shooter. Chase after the shooter. That's correct. It was the deadliest attack against LGBTQ plus people in the history of the United States, claiming the lives of 49 victims with 58 others injured. In the very early morning of June 12, 2016, Domestic terrorist Omar Mateen shot up a gay nightclub in Orlando, Florida called Pulse. People are getting hit by bullets, like blood is everywhere. And then there was a moment where he stopped shooting in the bathroom. The FBI deemed the occurrence a terrorist attack. Mateen claimed that the shooting was motivated by U.S.-led interventions in Iraq and Syria. The police negotiated with Mateen for some hours following the shooting, and over a dozen SWAT officers breached the building shortly after 5 a.m. They killed Mateen following a brief shootout. Then, using explosives, police blew open the bathroom wall to take out the killer and save Tiara, Akira, Patience, and the other hostages. The Boston Marathon bombing. The first responders I know came right over, but time felt like it was standing still. Seeing the U.S. invasions of Iraq and Afghanistan as a war against Muslims, radicalized brothers Johar and Tamerlan Tsarnaev staged this domestic terrorist attack. On April 15, 2013, they placed two homemade pressure cooker bombs on the route of the Boston Marathon. Three were killed and hundreds were injured. What's an anomaly in a crowd of 10,000 people? Somebody that's wearing a hat that says, I'm the terrorist? The case remained cold for three days, until the FBI released photos of the Tsarnaev brothers. They remained free until April 19th, when Tamerlan was killed in a shootout and Johar was arrested. He was sentenced to death and is currently imprisoned in a Colorado supermax called ADX Florence. After listening to every word of testimony, I still couldn't really figure out how a kid who had a potentially promising future could commit such a horrendous, violent act. The death of Kaylee Anthony. July 15, 2008, the Orlando police get a 911 call from a woman. She gives her name as Cindy Anthony. In some ways, the trial of Casey Anthony is the 21st century's equivalent to the O.J. Simpson case. It was studiously watched and studied by millions, and it involved a flawed prosecution and highly controversial outcome. After missing toddler Kaylee Anthony was found dead on December 11, 2008, suspicion immediately fell on her mother, Casey. We're not doing well, Kate. Someone just said that Kaylee was dead this morning. Surprise, surprise. What mother says, surprise, surprise, about the disappearance of her own daughter? The prosecution argued that Casey Anthony had grown sick of being a mother and killed her daughter with chloroform. The defense claimed that Kaylee had drowned and was secretly disposed of in the nearby woods. The defense won, and Anthony was found not guilty, spurring public cries of outrage and disbelief. She's somewhere in Florida, from what I understand. Whatever's life she has, I hope she makes something positive for it. Am I ever going to speak to my daughter again? No. We're, we're done. The Charlie Hebdo shooting. This tragedy catapulted questions about religion and free speech to the forefront of everyone's minds in January 2015. 
Shortly before noon on January 7th, two Islamic terrorists entered the offices of the satirical French newspaper Charlie Hebdo and killed 12 people. Further 11 were also injured in the attack. The assailants remained free for two days, but were eventually killed in a shootout with the police. They had targeted Charlie Hebdo for its cartoons of the Islamic prophet Muhammad, which many Muslim groups see as blasphemous. In tout cas, il y a un truc qui est malin, c'est on n'a pas représenté Mahomet. On n'a pas vu le, là on voit pas le visage de Mahomet. The response to the shooting was swift and fierce, with marches in support of Charlie Hebdo held across France, and the phrase "Je suis Charlie" or "I am Charlie" trending across social media. Oui, vous aviez les étuis des, des balles partout, et après, bah, vous aviez les cordes et des. des... De, 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 de mes amis qui étaient plein de balles. Elizabeth Holmes and Theranos. The Elizabeth Holmes revolution turned out to be an extraordinary fraud, a lie that put lives in jeopardy. It seemed like the health technology company Theranos was set to change the world. The company claimed that it had revolutionized the science of blood testing and was subsequently valued at $10 billion in the mid-2010s. Its young founder, Elizabeth Holmes, had raised over $700 million in investments and was personally valued at over $4 billion. You all are part of something that is a revolution and you're part of something that is going to change our world. What, what higher purpose is there? However, everything came crashing down in 2015. Experts started investigating Theranos' claims and with help from a whistleblower, the Wall Street Journal uncovered a dark secret. Theranos had lied about its technology, defrauding investors. Theranos was dissolved, and Holmes was sentenced to just over 11 years in prison for criminal fraud. Not for a moment do I believe that she lies in bed at night and thinks, I was a swindler, I was a crook, I lied. The murder of Jamal Khashoggi. Our timeline shows the ruthless efficiency of a hit team of experts that seemed specially chosen from Saudi government ministries. On October 2nd, 2018, Saudi journalist Jamal Khashoggi entered his country's consulate in Turkey while his fiance waited outside. Many believed he was killed inside the consulate, as Khashoggi often criticized the Saudi government. This assertion remained unproven until October 25th, when the Saudi government admitted their involvement. I wasn't aware of how dangerous it might be for Khashoggi to go into the consulate. I told Hatice to wait until I made some calls. A team of Saudi assassins ambushed Khashoggi inside the consulate, killed him, and disposed of his body. They covered up evidence to suppress the truth throughout the following weeks. The CIA reported high confidence that Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman had ordered the murder. He became prime minister of the country in September 2022. And prosecutors are seeking the death penalty for several suspects in Khashoggi's killing. But that doesn't include Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, who many Western government officials are convinced authorized the killing. The USA gymnastics scandal. When the story came out in 2016, Nasser just came back into my head. In September 2016, the Indianapolis Star broke a major story about abuse in American gymnastics. USA Gymnastics was accused of ignoring complaints about coaches and covering up misconduct. At the center of the story was national team physician Larry Nasser, who, for at least 14 years, abused 265 women under the pretense of medical treatment. To try and justify the methodology that he used, Larry Nasser produced dozens of videos of him doing these various what he described as osteopathic procedures to little girls. He was convicted of numerous charges at the state and federal level and will spend the rest of his life in prison. The United States Olympic Committee has announced that USA Gymnastics will be decertified and the body has filed for bankruptcy. We're on the elite national team. We're training at the world and the Olympic level. Your parents don't go with you. And they trusted USA Gymnastics to make sure that they were protecting us. The Las Vegas shooting. The end of the hallway. Uh, I can't. I can't tell you what room. He looked like he fired down the hallway when I got close to the door. On the night of October 1, 2017, the United States experienced its deadliest mass shooting, surpassing the Orlando nightclub incident the previous year. 
for unknown reasons, a man named Stephen Paddock took aim from the 32nd floor of the Mandalay Bay Hotel in Las Vegas and fired over 1,000 rounds into the audience of a country music festival. The shooting would claim the lives of 60 victims and injure roughly 867 others. A person can, in our country can go out and buy that many weapons and not break the law until one of those kills a human being is a challenge for law enforcement. The 23 guns found in Paddock's suite had been purchased legally, and he had no documented history of mental illness. In response, the U.S. Justice Department banned the sale of bump stocks, which allowed semi-automatic weapons to fire in even more rapid succession. The city of Las Vegas came together almost as one big family. And they're still supporting each other uh, despite the, the tragic event that happened. Jeffrey Epstein. All Jeffrey cared about was go find me more girls. His appetite was insatiable. He, he couldn't stop. For decades, financier and socialite Jeffrey Epstein used his power to abuse young women. Police and the FBI compiled overwhelming evidence in 2008, only for Epstein to be given a sweetheart deal by U.S. Attorney Alexander Acosta, negotiated by lawyer Alan Dershowitz. Epstein served just 13 months with work release. It wasn't until 2019 that Epstein was arrested for sex trafficking. We're thrilled today with the ruling by Judge Berman. Only by taking away the freedom of Jeffrey Epstein can we restore the freedom of these victims? In the wake of the scandal, Acosta, who had become Donald Trump's labor secretary, resigned in disgrace. Epstein was found dead in his cell, having apparently taken his own life. However, given the high-profile people he may have implicated, from politicians to royals, theories have run wild. While Epstein escaped prosecution, co-conspirator Ghislaine Maxwell was sentenced to 20 years in prison. She set me up to walk myself to a predator's house where he assaulted me. The murder of George Floyd. According to the Minnesota statute, third degree murder does not require an intent to kill. Y'all just really just killed that man. The combined charges carry a maximum sentence of 35 years. The killing of George Floyd may be the most infamous example of police brutality in the century so far. On May 25, 2020, the police were called on Floyd after a store clerk accused him of using counterfeit money. Despite Floyd's cries that he couldn't breathe, responding officer Derek Chauvin knelt on his neck for 9 minutes and 29 seconds, resulting in his death. The scene was caught on video, and public outrage led to the largest protests in U.S. history. The majority were peaceful, but there were also riots and looting in some cities, as well as instances of police violence against demonstrators and journalists. As the protest spreads, more and more incidents of the police response are relayed around the world. Derek Chauvin was found guilty for the killing and sentenced to two decades behind bars. Attack on the United States Capitol. We go over one fencing, then we go to the next fencing, all the way. It's just like bedlam, sheer bedlam. Nobody cares. Nobody cares about law or anything like that. That's it. The images of the furious and violent mob that stormed the U.S. Capitol are not easily forgotten. After Donald Trump lost the 2020 presidential election, he and his team sought to overturn the results with 63 lawsuits and pressure on state and federal officials. As these attempts failed and recounts confirmed the results, he held a rally on January 6th to repeat his false claim that the election was rigged. We're gonna walk down to the Capitol and we're gonna cheer on our brave senators and Congressmen and women. His followers, which included far-right militias, stormed the Capitol to prevent senators from certifying the election results. Some of the rioters on the grounds were armed with guns, knives, axes, batons, baseball bats, stun guns, and chemical sprays. The attack resulted in five deaths, with an additional four distraught officers taking their own lives in the months afterwards. I didn't want my name going down in history as the guy that gave up the Capitol. The Edward Snowden leaks. I remember what the internet was like before it was being watched, and there's never been anything in the history of man that's like it. We may have assumed that the government was watching prior to 2013, but we didn't know how. 
That year, NSA contractor Edward Snowden turned whistleblower and leaked thousands of documents, revealing a global mass surveillance program of foreign and domestic nationals orchestrated by the U.S. and its allies. Honestly, I don't want to be the person making the decisions on what should be public and what shouldn't, which is why, rather than publishing these on my own um, or putting them out openly, uh, I'm running them through journalists. He claims that he had raised concerns through internal channels to no avail. The programs collect data, including emails, text messages, metadata, and more, using corporate partnerships, or just by sucking information up en masse from data centers and fiber optic cables. Snowden fled the U.S. to avoid prosecution, and has been labeled as a hero by his admirers and a traitor by his critics. I know how to keep a secret safe, and I also know when the public needs to know it. Harvey Weinstein. I think there are still a lot of people out there who know way more about what was happening here than what they've cared to share. The sexual abuse perpetrated by Hollywood producer Harvey Weinstein was an open secret for years. But in October 2017, exposés in The New York Times and The New Yorker laid everything bare. Since those reports, a total of over 80 women have accused Weinstein of sexual harassment or assault. Weinstein was eventually convicted and sentenced to 23 years in prison. Harvey Weinstein is unique in the sense that he was able to get away with this for so many years. Times are changing and we hope um, that people will be willing to come forward and will be heard. The case sparked the Me Too movement, which seeks to publicize and end sexual misconduct. A number of other prominent figures faced similar allegations in the 2010s, including actor and comedian Bill Cosby, who was imprisoned but controversially released in 2021. Bill Cosby came out of his house with his lawyers today, who talked to reporters there. Cosby was silent, but later gave an interview to a radio station. Sandy Hook. It takes an agonizing hour before it becomes clear just what's taking place inside the school. The United States was shocked on December 14, 2012, when 20-year-old shooter Adam Lanza attacked Connecticut's Sandy Hook Elementary School. Lanza killed his mother before traveling to the school, where he proceeded to shoot and kill a further 26 people. He later took his own life. At the time, it was the second deadliest school shooting in American history, following Virginia Tech in 2007. Our hearts are broken today. For the parents and grandparents, sisters and brothers of these little children, and for the families of the adults who were lost. The shooter's motive remains unknown. The incident prompted a powerful reaction in the media owing to the nature of the violence, the high body count, and the young ages of the victims. It also prompted some of the most infamous examples of misinformation this century, with popular conspiracy theorist Alex Jones spreading particularly cruel falsehoods. You realize now you were mocking the difficult emotional reactions of people who provably lost their children. No, I was not mocking. I was showing what people were questioning. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. 9-11. What can you tell us about what you saw? Uh, I can tell you that I was watching TV and there was this uh, sonic boom. September 11th, 2001 heralded the violence and unrest that would characterize the next few decades. With a list of grievances around U.S. policies in the Middle East and elsewhere, 19 al-Qaeda terrorists hijacked and crashed three commercial airliners into the World Trade Center and the Pentagon. You can see the firemen assembled here, the police officers, FBI agents. A fourth plane was brought down following a revolt by passengers and crew. The deadliest terrorist attacks in history, September 11th claimed the lives of 2,977 victims and left thousands injured. 9-11 changed everything, entrenching conspiracy theories in our social fabric, ushering in a new era of mass surveillance, and leading to the U.S.-led invasions of Afghanistan and Iraq. It is an unforgettable tragedy that even decades later remains the most notorious crime of the century. On March 19, 2003, George W. Bush and the United States military invaded the sovereign nation of Iraq, a nation that had never attacked the United States. Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.